welcome you into another edition of EPAC All Access here on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube as we're at Martinsburg High School for Bulldogs football practice. Colin McLaughlin, Dylan Bishop, and Spencer Dupuis. Glad that you're joining us today here for this edition as Martinsburg trying to come back after a tough loss from Huntington last year to fall just short of the state championship opportunity. Looking to turn that around and go back to glory, guys. And looking at this team, it seems like the pieces are put into place to do that. Yeah, I, I think so. Obviously, they're losing some of their senior leadership from last year, Ezra Bajan and Cam Shallis and uh, some other guys like Zion Grantham. So they're replacing a good bit of talent, but as we know, they always have talent. And like we, you know, Murphy Clement is still here. He's going to be your main QB1 as opposed to splitting snaps with, with Bajan. So I, I think there's going to be a little bit of an adjustment period here, and obviously Coach Dave Walker is back. So there's some changes here, but I think it's nothing that you would really say slows them down from being, you know, one of those big championship contenders in the state. So you, you're not really expecting any less of them despite, you know, things not being quite as set in stone compared to last year. Yeah, and I think they're, they're not necessarily changes. It's more upgrades. I mean... Dave Walker comes back to Martinsburg, legendary head coach. You know, he won all those state championships to begin things. Then he tries the new challenge of going to coach college football at the Division II level. And I think him coming back is just bringing a wealth of knowledge that he gained at the college level and how things are done differently, you know, different side of things. So it can, you know, bring back new things to uh, this Martinsburg team. I think you bring that. You've, the fact that everything we're here in, and we'll be able to check out a little bit of practice after this, uh, is just the fact that Murphy Clements kind of turned himself into a full-time quarterback. I mean, we saw him a couple years ago throw the ball quite a bit. Last year, not as much as he was kind of making that comeback from that Liz Frank injury and trying to get 100%. You know, sometimes he'd come in, he'd take the ball, he'd go, you know, 60, 70 yards and then have to not play a few downs on offense or defense just because he was trying to get his foot back to 100%. And I think you add that. You add the fact that you know you have a you have your quarterback in waiting for next year and Coy Fagan, who's like you know I can adjust. I'll be the running back. I'll play outside linebacker. You'll hear from him later. I think that that's a huge thing. Is that you've got guys. You got Cash Gideon coming back. You got Buzz Dover coming back. You've got obviously your whole. You returned the whole offensive and defensive line, most of the defensive line, but you returned those guys, and it all starts up in the trenches. Yeah, I mean, this team's defensive line last year was uh, incredibly hard to stop with Rashad Reed and Xerxes Yancey and the like up front. So, And they bring those guys back this year. Rashad Reed, you know, maybe the most dangerous player in the entire EPAC you know, offense or defense. Uh, just the way that he can get pressure up front, penetrate the offensive line. So this defense is going to be really good. The offense has a few more questions, but obviously, like we mentioned, Murphy Clement's still there, and I think you saw, all, you know, the situation like you mentioned. You know, Murphy wasn't at 100% last year. Plus, you add in that I think just in general, uh, at least from the looks of last year, Bajent was more of the the better passer. Murphy was the better runner. So just you, know, you know, situational stuff. Sometimes you want explosive plays. You're more likely to go through the air. But uh, bringing back the offensive and defensive line is so key for any team because that's just if you can't block or you can't get pressure, it's so much harder to do a lot of other things. So the fact that they're going to be strong up front is going to mean a lot. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how strong this offensive and defensive line is because for the most part, there's a good amount of teams in the Eastern Panhandle that are in the same situation, bringing back a majority, if not all of their offensive and defensive lines. But if it's the same as last year, then we know that Martinsburg's going to have probably the best of those two up front, a team that averaged 40-plus points a game last year and then defensively only allowed 13.9. So can things improve in that aspect, which would be crazy to think of, but definitely accomplishable because we know the growth of this junior class now becoming seniors and then the sophomores that are now juniors. 
Yeah, I think that's definitely huge. Is I mean, that was my one take is that you bring back that whole line. And I think, too, you bring back some guys that were on the JV squad that are going to come up and maybe get some rotational time because, you know, linemen, I feel like a lot of linemen this day and age, they're, they want to play both ways. So you have rotational guys on offense and defensive line coming in, coming out, depending on the package. And I think those guys getting another year as well is going to help. But, you know, I, I think later on when you guys talk to Coach Walker, uh, you know, you're going to talk about the schedule. We'll bring up the schedule here now. Uh they couldn't play 10 games this year some things got moved around and you know partially that's probably got to do with the fact that they moved things around and kind of backloaded the epac games rather than kind of playing them whenever whatever and you had to lose a game there here and there and you only play nine games this year we saw last year in the state cabell midland played nine games but i think going forward it seems like ever since we've been in town that finding games for martinsburg has been a huge problem and i think going forward with the way the SSAC has kind of changed things around, which you've talked to him about, I, I think is going to be huge for them trying to schedule. But this year's schedule is what's most important. Yeah, let's take a look at that schedule now as week one is a Saturday afternoon game. It's a nationally televised game, so unfortunately we will not be having that broadcast due to Flow Sports having the contract. If things were different, we'd obviously be there, but unfortunately cannot be there week one as Martinsburg takes on Clarkson North, a team actually from Canada coming down to Ohio for the Ireton Gridiron Classic Um showcase i believe is the terminology that they use and then week two a home game against a power in the state of virginia that being stone bridge and then two more home games for you week three week four against boys latin school maryland and hd woodson out of dc then another home game against jefferson to start conference play in week five week six you're at musselman for the first road game that will have and then Washington for homecoming October 6th, the bye week October 13th, Spring Mills at home here for Martinsburg October 20th, and then the final game of the season on October 27th is at Hedgesville. So other than that week one game, if you're a fan that likes traveling to the games, you don't have any travel. The farthest game is Musselman and Hedgesville on the road. So definitely an enjoyable season coming up for this Bulldog squad. Yeah, and I think, you know, when you look at the schedule, you see them trying to, you know, play some tough teams. I mean, Stonebridge is a perennial power in the state of Virginia. Growing up in Loudoun County, I got to witness it. Commander's defensive lineman John Allen played for a legendary head coach, Mickey Thompson. Uh, you know, a guy that played at UNC was on the Ravens for a little bit, uh, played there as well. Just a, a lot of players come through that system, and uh, it's definitely going to be an exciting game here for uh, the first home game of the year. Yeah, that being September 1st, so for fans tuning in, definitely mark that one on your calendar. But I want to go over and switch over to the defensive side. Something that I felt like was interesting when we talked with Coach Walker is kind of, I guess, the only biggest question mark when it comes to personnel, and that's the linebackers with now Cam Shallis, guy like Lolo Taylor Parati also graduating. So no longer here Jimmy for Harden. the Bulldogs, Jimmy Harden, too. So that's really the only spot that you're going to have to see newcomers really come in and step up. And one of those guys we actually talked to and you'll hear from later, and that being Coy Fagan. Yeah, and the, we had multiple of the players that we talked to that you'll, you'll hear later on mention Terrell Cofield, a uh, rising sophomore uh, who has stepped up as an uh, outside linebacker and a guy on, on offense as well, I believe, as a running back. So it, it'll be interesting. The, uh, Cam Chalice was kind of the – the, the steady rock in the middle of the defense as the linebacker. But, again, when you have such a great defensive line in front of you, it makes being a linebacker that much easier. And it makes me, it making it, it makes being a DB even that much easier. We talked to Sir Rod Musgrove about that very thing. And it, it does the same thing for linebackers when those guys, you know, when you have to double team Rashad Reed up front, and if you have to do the same with anybody else, then it just opens up the lanes for those linebackers to get into and it makes their job so much easier. This team's hungry, looking forward to the upcoming season. Any final thoughts, guys? I think this is going to be a team, I mean, you hear it from the guys. You mentioned hungry. I think they're going to feed off of falling to Huntington last year and, and try even better. I think bringing Coach Walker back kind of – we kind of knew something was going to happen here and just the fact that it's kind of like you would say Martinsburg old school now. 
when it comes to how things are going to run, you're going to see Coach Sherman up at the booth calling the plays down to Coach Walker, who's then going to be sig having them signaled into the quarterback. Uh, it's going to be a fun year for Martinsburg football, as always. I think the main thing I took away was how many of the players talked about how much more things seem to be running cohesively and organized uh, from a practice standpoint. Just the team in general seems to really be firing all, all cylinders from a kind of procedural standpoint. We always know that Martinsburg has the talent, and they did last year, and it seems like they do this year. They lost some, but they still have a whole lot, like they always do. But it didn't always seem like the team was... Uh, on the same page as much as maybe some other years they were so I think the fact that those players are saying yeah things just seem to be on top of everything coach Walker's full of knowledge and got us all organized and things like this I think that's a really good sign that this team could go back to not only just the semifinals but get even further well that's all from us it's now time to hear from the coaches and players here at Martinsburg High School. So sit back, relax. We'll be back for more EPAC Hall access right after this here on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. The 37th Community Wellness Screening Event sponsored by Rotary of Martinsburg with services provided by WVU Medicine will be held Saturday, August 26, 6 to 10 a.m. at WVU Medicine Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation on Tavern Road in Martinsburg. Know your numbers. It's easy and convenient. No waiting in line. No doctor's appointment. Discounted screenings offered. Pre-registration required. Deadline to register is August 18th. Sign up today. Call 304-264-1223. When will I be able to retire? How do I make the most of the money I have? How do I leave a lasting legacy to my loved ones? I'm Philip McCoy, financial advisor with the Marius Group, a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated. Call us today at 304-263-4343 to help you make the most of your financial future. Our office is located at 1270 Winchester Avenue, Martinsburg, West Virginia. Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated, member FINRA and SIPC. This is Eric at Hagerstown Ford. Over the last decade, the way we buy things have evolved. Now, you get on your phone, click Want It, and it shows up at your front door. At Hagerstown Ford, it is that convenient. We've changed the car buying experience on the I-81 corridor forever. And with a return policy better than Walmart, there's absolutely no reason to buy a newer used car, truck, or SUV anywhere else. Just like Amazon, Hagerstown Ford will deliver the vehicle to you, where you are, and on your time. And if you don't want it, return it, no questions asked. Why waste your time at a car dealership playing the dumb back-and-forth games? Besides, we hate it more than you do. I assure you, no dealership from Winchester, Virginia to Washington, D.C. will beat our price. No dealership from Chambersburg, Pennsylvania to Baltimore, Maryland will beat our price. And no other dealership will allow you to return it if you don't want it. Hagerstown Ford absolutely provides the best experience at the best price. Visit HagerstownFord.com to schedule your VIP experience. Click on the vehicle you want and get your new ride delivered to you at no risk. See dealer for details. Welcome back to EPAC All Access here on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. Colin McLaughlin and Dylan Bishop alongside now the head coach of the Martinsburg Bulldogs, Dave Walker. Coach Walker, welcome back. Thank you. Obviously first year back from Concord, so just talk a little bit about settling back into the environment here in Martinsburg. I, I mean, it's been a great transition, obviously being here for years, and um, you know, it was just like, you know, putting on an old pair of shoes or something, so you kind of fall back into it, but Hey, you know, I think the first uh, month or so here in, during June and July, it was more of an observation period for me just to assess and, and uh, evaluate some, some players and things like that. But, uh, you know, we started practice July 31st. Things have been going pretty well. What do you think was the biggest thing that you picked up coaching at the college level that you think you're going to bring back here to Martinsburg? Probably some operational stuff, just uh, tweaking practice organization, staff organization, staff assignments, maybe some, some things like that. As far as the X's and O's, uh, I picked up a couple of concepts here and there, but um, I mean, football's kind of, you know, it's just football. It just, it's, it's more about attention to detail at the college level, and which you don't have the opportunity. You know, at the college level, you film everything, practice drills, everything, and you're able to go in the next day and evaluate because that's your full-time job. Well, now these guys have full-time regular jobs, so you, you don't get to, get to um, break it down as much as you'd like to. Um, but I think the biggest adjustment for me uh, was, um, or the big difference, I, I got used to looking at older guys, you know, college level athletes, and then coming back to the high school level, it was, it was like a little slower for me. But 
the longer I've been here, it's, you know, I, I think the more I'm here and the more I watch them, I think the better we get. At first, I wasn't so sure, but now I think we're, we're going to be okay. So with these guys here at Martinsburg, never really been coached by you. They know of your legacy, but never actually got to experience you being their head coach. What is, I guess, that acclamation been for them in your point of view? I don't know if you've – I mean, you'd have to ask those guys what they think. But, uh, I mean, for me, I think it's just how you how you conduct yourself, how you practice. I think a lot of it is just conducting yourself at practice and how you practice. And, and my big mantra is just being, you know, getting comfortable being uncomfortable, uh, making sure that our guys are, are able to handle adversity. How are you going to be able to react when things aren't going well? And you got to get used to being uh, – you know, get out of your comfort zone. You got to push yourself. And uh, some guys have, have done a really good job, and some guys are still learning. And obviously, you're coming back after having, uh, you know, a good legacy here of all the state championships you uh, you won. Uh, how does the how much of that plays into what you what you just said? Plays into managing expectations with the players when it comes to, you know. Well, Coach Walker's back. You know they they won all those state championships when he was here, and we come back up and pick pick up right where he left off and. I mean, for me to sit here and say we're going to duplicate what we did the last four years, I hear, I mean, you don't, you don't just go out and win 56 games in a row or whatever. So and it's going to be hard to, to, to match what we did. But our, our goal was just, you know, baby steps one day at a time, just get better every day and uh, and just continue to, to be a better person on the field and off the field. And, you know, the games will take care of itself. So even though it's going to be played later on here in this episode, we already interviewed Rashad Reed and a few of the players and now talking with you and something that resonated with them was that statement that you just made to my previous question being comfortable with the uncomfortable I guess is something that he's really trying to take a look at and do what are some of the I guess situational examples that you maybe try to show them if any well I think one of the big things is just being able to um, play through discomfort practice through discomfort I think you know um, sometimes guys uh, you know it's hot out here it's hot out here right now and you, and they're uncomfortable right now but you've got to be comfortable being uncomfortable uh, you've got to be able to practice you got to learn to practice well you've got to go full speed I mean the difference between good players and great players is how you practice and, uh, and I think and, and definitely if you want to try to play football on the college level you have to know how to practice you got to go full speed at everything you do and um, sometimes high school kids have trouble with that, you know, and just because of the age or the maturity. So I think for me, I, I, again, to answer your question, a good example is just being able to overcome, you know, the, the heat, the practice, the discomfort with what's going on. If you've got a bump or a bruise, you've got to be able to push through those things. And uh, uh, I think most of our guys are doing a pretty good job. we got a few guys that still need to get a little better at it. But we're, we're working, and I remind them, and we're working at it. Uh, coming into this year, we're uh, with Murphy Clement coming into sort of the quarterback one role. It's at least what we expect to see when he's kind of had some snaps here and there the last two years at quarterback. Uh, what have you seen coming in here with him uh, as that you know go-to quarterback as opposed to the last two years splitting snaps with Ezra Bajan? Well, I think the big thing with Murph is that I, I, I think for the first time in a couple of years he's actually healthy. He's 100% healthy. Um, that, that stands out. And then, uh, really, I mean, he, he throws the ball uh, really well, better than what I was anticipating coming in. So he's been very accurate. Uh, his decision-making has been good. And, um, you know, his, fundamentally, he's, he's been really solid. So, um, and, and, and he's, he's, he's really become a complete quarterback with, with what he can do with his legs and his arms. So if he stays healthy and continues in our receiving core, we got good guys to throw to. There's no reason why he can't have a great year. What's the expectations for, I guess, the guys around Murphy? Because there's still some guys that are coming up from JV, some guys that were there on the varsity level as his weapons, and then the line all coming back as well. I think each each person, they have to just do their job. That's my expectation. Do your job, and don't worry about the guy beside of you. He'll do his job, you do yours, and if everybody does that, then the unit will come together. So I, I think that's just a big part of it, just uh, holding each other accountable, holding yourself accountable, do your job, and uh, you know, just try to get better. 
now obviously uh, last year uh, you were at Concord and I think anyone that was following you know football at any level around here was keeping up with Tyson Bajan at Shepard and a lot of times if you went to the passing stats for you know NCAA Division II a lot of times you thought you would see Tyson Bajan at the top of every list but at some lists and receiving yards as well you saw Concord guys up there at the top is that something we're going to see a lot this year or you think you're going to pass the ball a lot or is that more of you, you were going with what you had there at Concord and you're going to uh, maybe go with you know around the personnel here at Martinsburg. Well, I think at the collegiate level, for us down there, uh, what we what we consider balance was about a 60-40 split pass to run. Uh, in high school, you want to you know I've always been kind of a 50-50 guy. Uh, I think a lot of it just depends. You have to adapt to the strength of your team, and I think you have to see uh, what they're giving you each each night. So every Friday night, you know one one night we might be run heavy, then the next week we might be pass heavy. I think it's just going to depend on what we're seeing. And we will adjust uh, and adapt to, to give our kids the best opportunity to be successful. But um, you could see some big stats, but uh, I think it's just going to – I'd like to – I'd rather have, um, you know, four guys with 20 catches than, than one guy with, you know, 80 or whatever. So I think it's the, it's harder to defend if you're a balanced not, – not, so, not so much run and pass, but you balance it by distribution to, to your athletes, I think. We've got, you know, in Martinsburg, we've always had some guys that could play. So, you know, the problem's always been you only got one football and you got all these guys. So our goal was to try to keep it balanced, spread the ball around. And then if somebody's got the hot hand, then you feed it to them a little bit more. But I think it, it, you got to be prepared to do whatever you can do and try to take whatever the defense gives you. You just said trying to see the strength of your team. Still not to the regular season yet, preseason right now. Uh, scrimmage under the belt, a few practices under the belt. What have you seen so far being the strength of this team? I think up front, offensive, offensively and defensively, uh, our offensive and defensive line has uh, has looked really good. Um, you know, Murph, obviously, at quarterback has looked really good. Our receiving core is good. Um, but yeah, you know, right now, I think we're I think we're really solid. We're untested in a couple areas. Linebacker maybe being one because you know, we've got some new faces in there and some younger guys. But Everywhere else, there's, there's some veteran guys coming back, and they've uh, they've proven that they're pretty good players. I would talk about that you know, defensive line. That was kind of what we focused on last year. Is they like made the number one strength of this team was that defensive line. Rashad Reed, Cersei Zianci, and those guys up front. Mm-hmm. Uh, the defense in general. What have you seen from them so far in the preseason? And uh, have have you changed anything up from what they were doing last year? Had to install. Or is it, you know, you obviously you still have a lot of the same coaches here from last year. What has that process been like on the defensive side? Uh, we've, we've, we've added some things in the back end, on the secondary, you know, maybe, uh, you know, backed off a little bit at certain times, more situational stuff. But uh, we're pretty much doing the same things that, um, that Coach Ash has, has done, you know, pretty much his whole career. We've just added a few back end coverages and a couple of different things that I like to see. Uh, but other than that, you you got to get your guys and let your players play. And uh, with what I've seen with us up front, I mean, uh, they're pretty good. So you, you better you better get rid of the ball pretty quick. You know. Looking at the schedule now, you start week one in Ireton, Ohio, against a team from Canada, a team that uh, is, I guess, in a different situation than being down here in this area. What, I guess, are you excited for getting to see a team from outside of the country? I, you know, I've really not thought about the fact where they're where they're from or anything. I, I guess what I'm excited about is just getting back and um, you know on the sideline and just, and just watching our guys perform and, and see where we're at and see where we need to go. I mean, obviously, I I love our Friday night lights. Of course, playing on Saturday afternoon it's going to be like a college game. So um, I'm just excited to be back on the field on, as a bulldog and, and just watching these guys. And, produce and watch them grow and climb and, and develop and sticking with that schedule you guys only currently have nine games scheduled right now what it went into that decision is that something that will is like for sure rest nine games or is there going to be a 10th game looked at and what just went into that process so far for there to only be nine games well right now uh, we've only got nine unless something Unless somebody calls us and somebody drops a terror, you know, you could always pick one up, I guess, once the season starts. But the chances of that are pretty rare, especially if somebody's they're not going to want to pick us up. Um, unless, like, the Redskins or something needs a game. Um, but, you know, why do we only have nine games? Because a lot of teams 
don't want to play us that are you know West Virginia schools and the, and the out-of-state schools that do want to play us are traditionally powerhouses um, so uh, I, I'm not going to put our kids in a situation to play somebody that 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 it's not a, it's an unfair advantage just so I can say we got 10 games or just so we can say we're playing the toughest schedule what I want to see is us guys our guys being able to play in a schedule against teams that have, of equal enrollment um, equal size schools uh, I don't mind playing one or two teams every year that are really really good but we can't you know continually uh, play against teams that are you know private schools and things that actually we got it we got a few of them this year it's gonna be tough for us so uh, and how does that happen I don't know I, I mean I guess you beat everybody you nobody know, want to play or, or so uh, you know we've dealt with it for years so hopefully we can get some of those teams back on the schedule at some point that dropped us the SSAC, I don't know if it's for this season or next season, is uh, establishing a rule with that strength of schedule, even with this losses, season. okay, mm -hmm. uh, counting towards points for the postseason. So I guess the question that I'm trying to ask is uh, the mentality, not only for other teams wanting to play a team like Martinsburg and maybe your team going and playing those regional games, will either that change knowing that that rule is now into effect? I mean, I think it's something you gotta you gotta take a look at and consider. I, I mean, I feel a lot better playing somebody like Stonebridge, who if if if, if they beat us, they're probably going to go ten and zero, and then you know, losing to a ten and zero team is the same as beating a a winless AAA school, which it wouldn't hurt you. It actually would help you at the end if you divide by ten or by, or in our case, by nine. So it would actually help us uh, even a loss. But uh, and then whereas somebody else across the state plays gets beat by somebody that goes five and five and then you know we, we would be able to pass those guys in points but uh, I think it's a good thing I've been I've been uh, talking about it for years and I'm glad they finally made a move on it I think it's a good thing who do you think have been some of the leaders of this team so far that you've noticed because obviously guys like Ezra and Cam Chalice uh, they've lost them from last year so there's been some of that senior leadership roles that need to be filled who do you think you've seen so far whether it's leading by example or vocally that has stepped up as the leaders of this team i mean i think murph and rashad are probably you know two the, the first two that comes to mind uh, most of them lead by example they're not real vocal guys um and i, I maybe it's and i've it's rare that you get a kid like that that, that it comes out that, that is a real vocal leader plus he can back it up you'll get the guy every once in a while that's vocal but he doesn't really back it up but these guys, they all they all work pretty hard, um, and that, that's what makes it special. When you've got guys that could go out and and police your your team and, and and be vocal leaders and get those guys, you know, make them want to follow you. So, uh, but I think we got some guys that are very capable, and I think they're 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 only getting better at it. What are the goals that you have in place for your team this year? Yeah, just to get better every day. Uh, you know, just to be. Be good players, work hard, be great teammates. Being a great teammate is so important. Uh, just being a good person off the field, on and off the field. Uh, be, you know, don't don't be somebody that uh, is going to get in trouble in school that, that I've got to deal with. And but just being a good teammate. And as far as the, the, you do all those other things, you work hard, practice the wins and losses will take care of itself. Uh, I, I really don't have any goals as far as I don't have not really looked at it in those regards. I haven't for years and years. I just think it's important for us to come out. And, you know, we have a plan, we have a practice plan, we have a, you know, we have a script we go by and just go out and practice hard, be a great teammate, and, and try to have a little fun. All right, Coach Walker, thank you for the All time right. again. Thank Welcome back as well. We'll take another quick break here on EPAC All Access and then be back for more on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. Laura. Hey, Laura. What's with the sunglasses? The word is spreading. Bechtel Jewelers is home to some dangerously brilliant diamonds. See the difference at Bechtel Jewelers in Inwood. Sunglasses, Sunglasses not, not included. included. Really? Yeah. I'm gonna call my parents. Dad, come over. The first gets done. <laughs> the Traeger Connected Experience. Everything you need for epic flavor. And then some. 
Shop now and save at Orsini's today. W. Harley Miller Systems understands the need and desire for reliable and affordable smart home solutions. Secure your home with a security system and keep a close eye on your family. Automate your home with a Control 4 system and have smart technology work as one. Set daily schedules to control your thermostats. Push a button and set the mood for dinner by dimming lights and playing music. Or just sit back and enjoy a movie in your own home theater. Put decades of experience to work for you. Visit us at whmsystems.com or call 304-350-1931. At Carter Myers Automotive, what we do today will tomorrow become what we've done. That's why Owners Just Do More no longer defines us. Our work is never done because what we live by doesn't have a finish line. We care. Our company of owners is moving lives forward every day by finding more ways to care before, during, and after your purchase. Because when you're happy, so are we. Carter Myers Automotive. Proud to be the owners who just care more. Welcome back inside EPAC All Access here at Martinsburg High School. Colin McLaughlin and Dylan Bishop joined alongside offensive and defensive lineman Rashad Reed. Rashad, big offseason for you. You've already committed to Elon University. Congratulations for Thank the full you. ride scholarship for that. Just talk about that process. Um, it was a long process. Uh, I had to go out for the camps, get a lot of exposure this summer. Um, it was definitely worth a grind. You know, at the end of the day, I did get the offer, full scholarship, and uh, just um, I'm glad I put in the work in that offseason to make myself better and make myself better for this team. Now, obviously, coming into this season, the big storyline is that Coach Walker's back. Uh, what would you say so far into the season through training camp and preseason has been the biggest difference having Coach Walker at the at the helm? Definitely, I got to say, he, you can tell he knows what he's talking about. Like. Yeah, like you can tell he's been doing this for a long, a good long time. And as I'd say, I'd say everybody's morale's went up a lot just by, um, by him being here. Everybody's working harder. Everybody's pushing themselves to the limits. So I say just overall, everybody's working harder and getting better every day. And for you, it's year two in the program. Just talk about, I guess, the strides that you feel like you've made from year one to year two here at Martinsburg during your time. Definitely think I made, you know, big jump when I first came here, you know. Nobody knew who I was, so I had to show them who I am. And this year, still got to show them who I am. And uh, I, I definitely got adapted really fast because, you know, you've, you have, with life and everything else, you have to learn to adapt fast to certain situations. But I definitely got adapted in. Um, senior, going to be a leader this year. Everything's, everything's just starting to come in smoothly and slowly. And you mentioned being a leader. Uh, what do you think? Obviously, last season you guys had a lot of seniors that aren't here anymore, lost your, you know, your main – a passing quarterback, Ezra Bajan, and Cam Chalice on the defensive side as well. Who do you think have been some guys so far this year that have stepped up into those into those holes that those guys have filled to be leaders, whether it's vocally or leading by example? Definitely, definitely got to say a lot of the starting guys, you know, everybody's teaching the younger guys what to do, how their roles should be, their positions. Um, I got to shout out Murph, Murph, EJ, Wes, a lot of the guys on the defense, Coy, Cash, everybody's starting to step up and fill in shoes that they're supposed to be, as everybody on this team is supposed to be leader. Last year, the season unfortunately came to an end in Huntington. I know it's definitely a bitter feeling, but something that, I guess, puts a chip on your team's shoulder and makes you hungry for this coming season. So just talk about through the off season how that has really motivated you guys for this coming season. Funny thing is they have our losses all put up in front of the weight room so that we just get to, you know, it, it brings back the memories that we didn't work hard enough last season. And that's a reminder right there that every day when we come in and we work, we have to keep working no matter what, no matter how hard, no matter how hard we got to do, whatever it is, we just got to keep working. I mentioned how uh, Ezra from last year is no longer here. So that means that Murphy Clement's going to step up into that main quarterback one role. What have you noticed from him this offseason so far leading into the year for him to step up and be the guy behind center? Definitely, definitely have noticed Murph's getting better, reading defenses, passes, you know, he's back on his feet, fully recovered, so he's really he's really stepping up his game compared to last year, and last year he, was, he did amazing too, but he's really getting back into the flow and becoming a true quarterback to where he can be run, pass, everything. And for you, being a part of the offensive and defensive line, everybody comes back that had started for that. Just talk about that and how much the cohesiveness has really grown from 
last year to this year? Everybody has that bond. You know, all the seniors, it's not nobody's new. We got a couple new guys, but it's everybody's still together, kind of like a family. Nobody was split up, nobody left, you feel me? So I just feel like everybody has more of that bond and, uh, yeah. Now, you mentioned some of those new guys. So who do you think are going to be some guys, whether it's you know guys that are just stepping up in the bigger roles or completely uh, coming on uh, to the team that we're going to see this year and think, man, where did this guy come from? And where hey, they're, they're really showing out for the first time. Standouts at the moment, I would say Cash, Tyon, Malika, um, Busky, a lot of the a lot of the sophomores coming up to juniors, a lot of the younger guys, they seem to be some dogs for us. So hopefully we're gonna see what they made of this year. What are some of the goals that you have in place for yourself this year? Definitely, um, definitely want to get you know high tackles. Want to get up into the 80s this year again. Um, I definitely do want to make sure uh, I'm not hurt, stay injury free, but I also want to make sure I have the best season that I know I can have. Obviously, Coach Walker's been here for a lot of state championships. So what, what has he told you guys when it comes to, you know, managing expectations? Because pretty much every year it's expected, you know, if Martinsburg's not in the state championship game, then, then what happened? Then it's uh, So what do you think, what has he told you guys? What have you been telling your, uh, guys yourself when it comes to those expectations or managing those expectations? Always, he just always says, get comfortable being uncomfortable. And him saying that has really just stuck with me these last few weeks and since he's transferred over. He just tells us every day, yo, like, y'all are doing good. It's going to be rough. I need y'all to get comfortable being uncomfortable so you can keep working and keep grinding. What are you most excited for this season? Definitely excited to just hit people for real. I mean, I love football. I love making plays. I, big, big TV, no TV. I love being on the field and in the live action experience. All righty, Rashad. Thank you for joining us here. And on the other side of this break, we'll be joined by another Bulldog. You're tuned into EPAC All Access on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. I'm Jonathan Bodwell, Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare and life insurance agency. We are here to help you navigate the Medicare maze. We represent all of the major carriers, and you do not pay any more to go through us than if you go directly through a carrier. But if you go through us, you have a local professional to help you with all your Medicare needs, not a voice that could be in some other part of the world. Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare agency. BodwellInsuranceSolutions.com or 304-283-0864. After a car accident, what do you get when you call Mansion Ferretti? You get more experience from a local law firm with over 115 years of combined service. More respect from a team who treats clients like their own family. And more fight because we want you to get every dollar you deserve. Experience, respect, results. If you've been injured, that's what you want in your lawyer. And that's what you'll get when you call us. Car accident? Get more with Mansion Ferretti. 304-264-8505. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. Nothing goes better with football than chicken. From Pee Wee to the big boys to the wing T formation, a hearty meal of 12 pieces for $12 is just what the boys need to be at their best. Oh my, fumbling, bumbling, stumbling. Omaha! Rocks 12 pieces of chicken, just $12. Welcome back to Inside EPAC All Access here at Martinsburg High School. We're now joined by Murphy Clement, the quarterback and safety of Martinsburg. And Murphy, big year for you. It's the first year you're really that starting quarterback, having the majority of the snaps. Just talk about that for us. Um, it, it's great to be able to be in that position and be able to lead the team like I, I've been wanting to. Obviously, last year was a little hard with Ezra there, but us, us both being there helped a lot. But... This year it's going to be great to actually be able to have it on my own and be able to control the offense side of the ball. And knowing that that's kind of how things were going to be this year, what did you work on in the off season really to prepare yourself for this season as that guy? Um, I really worked on my foot 
getting that back to 100%. Now I'm feeling good. Worked on my throwing ability because everyone knows I can run the ball, but passing was mainly the mainly main thing I needed to work on. So yeah, mostly just those two things and knowing the plays and learning the playbook and all of that. With Coach Walker being back, Coach Sherman still going to be the offensive coordinator, but he'll be now up in the press box calling the plays down to Coach Walker and then bringing that to you. So talk about that change and how uh, throughout these few weeks of practice you've been trying to learn that side. Um, it it, feel, it feels sort of just like it did last year. Just I feel like Sherman has a better sense of knowing what to call when he's up there. He can see the field better. So knowing he's up there and his ability to call out plays from up there and then bring him down to Walker it just helps a lot with seeing the defense and knowing what to run. How's it been being coached by Coach Walker so far? Obviously, this is going to be your first year with him. How, how have things changed? How have uh, things maybe stayed the same? What's, what's it just been like in general having Coach Walker here? It's great. He's a smart guy. He knows what he's talking about. He And he knows like ev all the positions. He knows what to do and what not to do. And he's you can tell he's just been in the game for a while. You mentioned it a little bit earlier, your injury, the Liz Frank injury, about a year or so now from that injury. I just talk about the healing process and how you truly are feeling now with that. Yeah, it took probably almost a year and a quarter probably, and now I'm feeling back to 100%. And only like probably like three or four months ago, it was still hurting a good bit, but I'm glad to finally be able to say it's back to 100% and being able to do what I, I've been able, I used to be able to do. Now you guys are bringing back your offensive line, but not all of your offensive weapons around you on offense. Who are some guys that have been stepping up the offensive role this year and just guys in general that you're looking forward to getting the ball to? Um, Cash is Gideon. Mainly he's, he, you guys might not know his name yet, but you're, you're going to know him this year a lot. Um, Sarad Musgrove, um, Corey, and um, Terrell um, Cofield, he, he's going to be good at running back this year. With you now being on the other side of the ball, switch over to that safety, trying to visualize the field, just talk about the defensiveness and your leadership on that side. Um, it's great. It's basically like the QB of the defense. I get to see the field. I call out the plays, and it helps that I'm the QB on the offense so I know what to expect from the defense so I can know like what like what they're playing on running and what to expect from the defense side of the ball. Now you guys unfortunately weren't able to come up with the state championship last year, lost in the semifinals to Huntington. How have you guys uh, been bounced back from that and used that as motivation so far for this year? Um, we used it a lot. It's At the end of the day it's we we didn't want to lose but it might have been like a good good like we needed to get like humble a little bit. I feel like we, were, we we thought we had it all. We thought we had any team in the state, and it was good to know we we don't have that sense of how do I say it? Like just knowing that we have everything. It was great to and then be able to use it as motivation every day. And we have that um, that score up on the wall in the locker room every day. We go in there, we see it come out, and it just fuels us every day. Today you announced another offer for you as you try to look to pursue your athletic career after this being your senior season, that being Fairmont State. I believe it's your third offer, correct? Yes, uh, just talk about, I guess, that process and um, how tough it's been trying to navigate everything. Um, yeah, it, it, at first, during my sophomore season, it felt like it was going to come along great, and then I ended up hurting my foot, and I got the Old Dominion offer, and then... It's sort of everything sort of just died down a little bit because since I was hurt, no one was really looking at me as much as I like wanted them to. So being able to come back and be back how I was pre in the in my sophomore season, it's gonna be great to see what can what I can do this year and see what teams look at me this year. All right, final question for you: What are your goals that you have in place for you this year? Um, mostly just win the championship. Like I, I want for myself to do the best, but mostly the team do, to do the best we can do and and everyone just do what they need to do to get to that spot. All right, Murph, appreciate the time. Good luck this Sir, year. We'll thank take you. another break here on EPAC All Access and then be back with another Bulldog right after this short break on TV10 and WRNR-TV on YouTube. 
At the Berkeley County Health Department, our motto is prevent, promote, protect. Since 1935, our mission has been to provide clinical and environmental services to protect the health of the general public. We're committed to building public health in our community by offering a wide range of services, including blood pressure screening, breast and cervical screening, family planning, counseling, lab testing, and more. We perform health inspections to make sure the restaurants you visit are clean, and we prepare and coordinate plans to respond to all hazards. The Berkeley County Health Department, 122 Waverly Court, Martinsburg. Hi, it's Talk Radio WRNR and TV10 Spencer Dupuy. When I got into a car accident and needed to get another vehicle, I wanted to go somewhere I could trust. So I went to the Heffley Motor Company at 993 Hedgesville Road. As a first-time car buyer, I really didn't know what to expect. But at Heffley, they treated me like family. Every step in the process was seamless. Not only did they give me a great deal, but they also helped me secure an amazing interest rate. Now I know firsthand why Heffley has such a great reputation in this community. I ride with Heffley Motor Company, so you should too. We are the Skinner Brothers. Most folks only need a lawyer once or twice in their lives. And when they're injured or in an accident, most people don't know what to do. We get it, it can be overwhelming. Nobody likes to be told, you need a lawyer. But that's why we're here. We wanna get you back to your normal life and help you recover. So if you or a loved one has been in an accident, give us a call. Let us figure out how we can get you compensation. Reach us at SkinnerWins.com or Google Skinner Lawyers. We'll treat you like family. Welcome back here to EPAC All Access. We're now joined by Sharif Williams, mostly known as Juice Man on the sideline, the hype man here for Martinsburg High School. Juice, what are you excited for this year, man? Man. Man. Ah, oh, man, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be really crazy. I'm very excited. My goal this year for my senior year is to uh, win a state championship. That's the goal, man. Okay. What's your favorite part of being out here with the football team? Oh, it's special. It's very, very special, man. I usually see you doing touchdown celebrations with the team, <laughs> hyping them up, giving them high fives. What are some of the uh, touchdown celebrations that we can look forward to this year? I don't know. I got I got one with Murphy, so I don't know. Well, he's going to be scoring a lot of touchdowns, so <laughs> oh, yeah. we might have to see different ones yeah. throughout the year with Murphy. But uh, Coach Walker, I know, before you came on, was saying talk nice about him. So just talk about uh, how you and him have been getting along. Oh, man, he's amazing. He's amazing, man. As soon as soon as I uh, heard that he was coming back, man, I was like, man, that, that's crazy. Everybody was buzzing about it, man. Everybody, heck, everybody in the school was buzzing about it. Yeah, even before he got here, right? Yeah. So let's see. Are you out here? You're out here at practice today. They have you out here every day. Is a special occasion to have you out here every day? Yeah. All right. What What are you usually doing out here at practice with the guys? Uh, man. Right after we practice, I just juice them up. All right, before nice. we let you go, it looks like we got Sarad coming on next. Yeah. What's yeah. a question that we should ask him? Get ready. Just get ready? Uh -huh. What he's been doing to get ready? All yeah, right, appreciate yeah, yeah. the time, Juice, man. Any final thoughts? Give us a go, Bulldogs. What should we be most excited for about this team? Hey, this team's going to be dangerous. I'm telling you. There we go. All right, Sharif, appreciate it. We'll take a break and then be joined by Sarad right after this uh -huh. here on EPAC All Access. The hunt for the 10th state championship is almost here, and legendary head coach Dave Walker is back to lead the Bulldogs to victory. Make sure your business isn't hidden on the sideline this season. Call 304-263-6586 and become an advertiser on Talk Radio WRNR and TV10 for the 2023 Martinsburg Bulldog football season. This is the home of Martinsburg Bulldog football all season long. Again, call us at 304-263-6586 to make sure your business is scoring touchdowns and not fumbling the ball this year. The W.B. Hospitals East Foundation is excited to announce the inaugural Dr. Frank Sabato Jr. Pickleball Classic to be held on Saturday, September 23rd at the W. Randy Smith Recreation Center in Inwood. Join us for a fun round-robin style pickleball tournament with start times at 8.30 and 10.30 a.m. Awards ceremony and lunch will follow. To register as a player or sponsor, call 304-264-1223 or go to wbmedicine.org backslash berkeley backslash giving to download the registration form. 
This is Eric at Hancock Chevrolet. Over the last decade, the way we buy things have evolved. Now, you get on your phone, click Want It, and it shows up at your front door. At Hancock Chevrolet, it is that easy. We've changed the car buying experience on the I-81 corridor forever. And with a return policy better than Walmart, there's absolutely no reason to buy a new or used car, truck, or SUV anywhere else. Just like Amazon, Hancock Chevrolet will deliver the vehicle to you, where you are, and on your time. And if you don't want it, return it. No questions asked. Why waste your time in a car dealership playing the dumb back-and-forth games? Besides, we hate it more than you do. I assure you, no dealership from Winchester, Virginia to Washington, D.C. will beat our price. No dealership from Cumberland to Baltimore, Maryland will beat our price. And no other dealership will allow you to return it if you don't want it. Hancock Chevrolet absolutely provides the best experience at the best price. Visit HancockChevy.com to schedule your VIP experience. Click on the vehicle you want, and your new ride will be delivered to you at no risk. See dealer for details. Welcome back here to EPAC All Access. Colin McLaughlin and Dylan Bishop alongside now wide receiver, defense back, Sarad Mosgrove. Sarad, just talk about this offseason and how it's been so far for you guys. It's been pretty good, you know. We've been out here grinding every day, trying to be as perfect as possible, you know. All right, Coach Walker's back. It's going to be your first year being coached under him. What have things been like having him at the helm? Maybe what's the difference between, you know, how he's been running things versus Coach Sherman last year or just the mentality of the team in general? How have things been with Coach Walker? There's a, uh, I say there's a good bit of similarities, but now that he's here, I feel like everything's more uh, – how would you say it? Uh, organized, more organized and put together, you know, everything's smoother. So for the past few seasons, it's been Murphy as well as Ezra split in time at quarterback, maybe more so Ezra last year with Murphy's injury, but this year it's now Murphy being quarterback one. Might see Koi Fagan here and there as well, but just talk about, I guess, the relationship between you, the receivers, and him. Well, there's a big relationship there. We all been playing together for a very, very long time now. Even past high school, we've been on elite since youth league. So there's a big bond and connection going on there. Yeah. We've we've talked a good bit about Murphy since he's going to be the number one guy, for, you know, basically full time. At least that's what we expect this year, as opposed to splitting with Ezra. But how about the rest of that offense? Obviously, you got the the offensive line coming back, but some of the wide receivers, including yourself. How's that wide receiver room look and those skill players in general, those running backs, the guys that are going to get the ball in their hands from Murphy? How those guys looked? Who should we be looking out for other than yourself, of course? Yeah, there's, you know, there's a lot of uh, depth in our talent right now. You know, we got a lot of guys coming back, you know, Cash, Buzz, Coy. Like, it's a lot of, it's a lot of talent going on right now. I can see that, yeah. What is something that maybe people aren't expecting from you guys this year? Mm. Uh, <laughs> I know it's a tough question. <laughs> uh, I, I really don't know. I just know we're, we're ready to go out there and put it all out. And you're going to be playing on both sides of the ball. We saw you in special teams a lot last year. How have things been going for you uh, just working individually on all sides of the ball, not just wide receiver, but working as a DB or a uh, kick and punt returner as well? No, it's been going good. I've been working a good bit, returning kicks and stuff try to eye down the ball, make sure you don't get any drops in there, you know, yeah, that's pretty much it. What are some of your strengths that you feel like you have that are really going to shine this year? My strengths, I say, is my defense, my aggression on the line, and uh, route running, too, I say, yeah. What side of the ball do you like more, offense or defense? Defense. Why is that? Uh, just an aggressive person get to be extra aggressive on defense. <laughs> Obviously, we talked a lot last year about how the defensive line for this team was really good. You're bringing a lot of those guys back, like Rashad and Xerxes. So, as a DB, how do you think that helps you out to have such a good front, like those guys rushing the pass or getting pressure? How does that help you out as a DB? Oh, it, it, it helps a lot, believe it or not, because while they're putting that pressure on there, he doesn't have a lot of time to get that ball off. So, any little mess up, that's just an opportunity for me to go up and get that ball. What are some of your goals that you have for this year? My goal, my goals personally, I say it's just being successful for like, in everything we do. Just want to succeed. 
and for the team in general. Obviously, you guys made it to the state semifinals last year, but couldn't get all the way. How do you guys? How have you guys used that as motivation for this season coming up? <laughs> I say we're we're real hungry. I feel like that little loss is probably what we needed. Some of us felt like we couldn't be beat, or we're just on a super high level, but that little kickback to reality got us hungry again. All right, sir, I'd appreciate the time, man. Good luck this season. We'll take Thank another you. break here on EPAC All Access and then be back with one final player here from Martinsburg High School. Hey, it's Colin McLaughlin here, your play-by-play -play voice of Martinsburg Bulldog football. Kickoff for the 2023 Bulldog season is almost here. If your business wants to be a part of it, now's your chance. With thousands of viewers every Friday night, your business can win too by advertising with us. Email me at colin at wrnrtv.com or call our office at 304-263-6586 right now. Don't wait, otherwise it will be too late. Let's go Bulldogs. It's the excitement of NCAA Division II football on TV10 featuring the Shepherd University Rams. He'll throw it, it's intercepted by Harrison. Dante Harrison is Mr. Touchdown on defense. Join us on Saturday, September 2nd, as the Rams kick off the 2023 season against Southern Connecticut State at Rams Stadium. Kickoff is set for noon with pregame coverage beginning at 11.30 a.m. right here on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. W. Harley Miller Systems understands the need and desire for reliable and affordable smart home solutions. Secure your home with a security system and keep a close eye on your family. Automate your home with a control force system and have smart technology work as one. Set daily schedules to control your thermostats. Push a button and set the mood for dinner by dimming lights and playing music, or just sit back and enjoy a movie in your own home theater. Put decades of experience to work for you. Visit us at whmsystems.com or call 304-350-1931. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons goal of financing for all, and Parsons famous above market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. Back here for more EPAC All Access at Martinsburg High School. Colin McLaughlin and Dylan Bishop were now joined by running back and outside linebacker Coy Fagan, brother of Kai Fagan, now at Shepherd University. We'll get to that maybe a little bit later, but want to talk and focus on you just throughout this season. You're finally getting some varsity time now. Got to see it a little bit last year, but now really being one of those starters. What are you excited for this year, man? Uh, I'm just excited to play, honestly. Like, it's fun out there. It's like a different level from JV and I'm excited to go out there and play. So we see that you're going to be run, playing a running back this year, and that's going to be something that you know maybe you didn't do that as much in the JV level. Has there been any sort of adjustment uh, so far, at least from last year, that you've had to make to going from more quarterback to running back? Yeah, so um, the play is it's, it's the same, but it's a different view of the game playing from running back. So I get to experience that. and. Um, I, it's easier to run the ball from running back, actually, so it's going to be fun. I remember two years ago we actually had the opportunity to cover a freshman game. You were the quarterback in that game and clearly the fastest kid out there on that field. Just talk about, I guess, your speed and from freshman year to now what you've really grown on other than that. Um, of course, I learned a lot more plays. Um, I've definitely got stronger, but... Uh, I say, yeah, I am faster than most, most people out there. I think I'm quicker. I'm quick. I got quicker throughout the three years, too. So what's been the main thing that you've tried to work on this offseason? Has it been the strength? Has it been the speed? Has it been the quickness? What do you think has been, obviously, I assume you've been working on all of it, at least a little bit, but what do you think has been the focus that you really wanted to hone in on? Uh, so this offseason, I ran track, so that helped me get faster. But I've been focusing on gaining some weight and uh, getting bigger and stronger. For my future. So as I mentioned at the start, you're the brother of Kai Fagan, who's now at Shepherd, uh, getting to pursue his athletic career. Just talk, I guess, about growing up and just the competitiveness between you guys and even throughout different seasons getting to play together, too, and how fun that has been. Yeah, growing up, it was uh, fun. Being the younger brother, you always get used to playing with bigger people. So it helped me 
uh, not be fear, be fearless. Help me be fearless and brave. But uh, I think it really helped me to go out on the football field and be as tough as I am today. Now you can correct me if I'm wrong. Did uh, did your brother have a year with the coach Walker here uh, as a freshman? I believe. Um, he didn't. He was he was on the freshman as an eighth grader. So I don't think he really mm -hmm. saw Coach Walker that much. But he was here. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, go, uh, Coach Walker is back. So what uh, what has been an adjustment this year? Obviously, you didn't spend all your time with varsity last year. But uh, what's sort of been the adjustment and having Coach Walker in here? He's come in. Uh, what have things been like with him? With him, it's been nice. Uh, I know we've been really successful with Coach Walker, so I mean, I'm looking forward to it. But I'm still like getting used to new coaching experience. So yeah. What are some of the goals that you have in place this year for yourself and the team? Um, I don't have any specific number of like yards or touchdowns, but um, I want to make an All-State team one of the All-States, either first team or second team, All-State. Uh, I want to get the championship. I know it's a team goal, but yeah. Um, yeah, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. Uh, who do you think are going to be maybe just one or two guys that are going to jump out this year and be those breakout guys? Because obviously we know about Murphy, we know about Rashad. Who do you think is going to be some guys that you know weren't talked about as much, didn't get maybe as much playing time last year? You know, other than maybe yourself when it comes to that role, but is there anybody else that you've seen so far in this preseason training camp process at practice that you think, man, that people are going to learn that name this year? Um, we hasn't been out here yet, but Nick Buskey, he's for sure going to be out there a lot. And on defense, uh, Terrell Cofield, he's a sophomore, uh, and he's been starting outside linebacker, so it's going to be fun with him. He's tough. All right, Corey, appreciate it. Good luck this year. We'll take one final break and then be back for the mic'd up segment here on EPAC All Access, so don't go anywhere. I pre-planned my funeral to make it easier on my family. They were relieved to know I'll get just what I want. My family actually thanked me for taking matters into my own hands. Turns out having this awkward conversation wasn't awkward at all. Pre-planning is my choice. There are certain things about me my family may not know. Now they won't need to guess. The choices are yours. The peace of mind is theirs. Pre-plan your funeral with Brown Funeral Homes and everything will be taken care of. Find out more online at brownfuneralhomeswv.com. Brown Funeral Homes, here for you. I'm Jonathan Bodwell, Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare and life insurance agency. We are here to help you navigate the Medicare maze. We represent all of the major carriers, and you do not pay any more to go through us than if you go directly through a carrier. But if you go through us, you have a local professional to help you with all your Medicare needs, not a voice that could be in some other part of the world. Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare agency. BodwellInsuranceSolutions.com or 304-283-0864. We are the Skinner Brothers. Most folks only need a lawyer once or twice in their lives. And when they're injured or in an accident, most people don't know what to do. We get it. It can be overwhelming. Nobody likes to be told, you need a lawyer. But that's why we're here. We want to get you back to your normal life and help you recover. So if you or a loved one has been in an accident, give us a call. Let us figure out how we can get you compensation. Reach us at SkinnerWins.com or Google Skinner Lawyers. We'll treat you like family. If you or someone you know suffers from the disease of addiction, help is available from the Berkeley County Quick Response Team with peer recovery coaches and support promptly to the homes of those who've recently experienced an overdose. This collective effort towards recovery brings resources and services to the community, including naloxone and treatment options. Call 304-267-1313 or visit the Berkeley County Recovery Resource Center at 800 Emmett Rouse Drive, Martinsburg. The Berkeley County Quick Response Team is funded through a DHHR grant with the Berkeley Morgan County Health Department. So, we are the home team. So, um, I probably will probably wear orange. All, probably. Okay. Yeah, probably so. And, I mean, they're they're black. Yeah. Like red. So, with orange. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, orange or gray. You can have the gray set to the side just in case. Okay. I'll let you. I mean, I might change mine like. Monday or Tuesday, but, 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 but it's supposed to be, yeah, yeah, it's supposed to be really hot, so I want it to be a little cooler of the color, so. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Hey, Coach Sherman. Hey. Go. Go. Ah. 
Coach Sherman, hey, about five minutes, four or five minutes. Hey, Coach Hatch, about four minutes. Oh, did they? You sure? All right, you want to start with the ball on uh, the 20 coming out? Tell you what, we've, uh, we, uh, we really, we got a couple more situational things we need to practice. Well, not today, but. Hey, if you're not in, off to the side. Hey, what we got here? Lucy, 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 Lucy. Hey, did you forget your route on that? No, it's not a crosser. Utah, it's not for you. Kaufman, you weren't set. Peyton Kaufman, you weren't set. Get your butt set. Laser, laser, laser. Back up, Todd. Back up. Make sure you guys know tomorrow you have to stay inside of 25 now, all right? So might as well get used to it. Get out a little bit quicker now, a little bit quicker. Hey, Jay, you need to widen out a little bit more on that. Jay, Lordy. Lucy, Lucy, you need to be a little wider on that last play. I'll get him right now. Hey, Jay, you crack on that. You crack on that. Murph, I need a better fake, Murphy. Lazy, I need a better fake. Hey, Ton. Hey, don't go up the field. Go straight at his feet right now to snap, all right? Go straight to his feet. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Get it done. You'll be wide open. Buzz, you're on the backside, Buzz. Buzz, you're backside, Buzz. There you go. Hold up. Let's line him up. Line him up. Line him up. Line up, guys, on the ball. Turn around, get set. Turn around, get set. You see what's going on. Look at Xerxes. You got to squeeze down. Yeah, you were a little bit too wide, Xerxes, all right? And we want him up here. We want you up here closer, too. One foot behind their foot. That way you've got a great angle to kick him out, all right? So you will be able to touch their hip with, with your hand. Get the work. So when they get set, just make sure you can touch their hip, all right? You guys good? All right. All right, let's run it. Corey, six yards. All right, go ahead and run it. And Xerxes, make sure your head's in the hole. And, now listen, and you need to make sure if you are, you don't want to be too deep because the backside guy will catch you. All right? All right. All right, we're good.